Hey guys, everybody knows that you want to have a great set of brand colors and you want your brand to look amazing online and on a phone, on a laptop, on a tablet, you want those colors to pop. So today I want to go over with the process that we kind of go through to figure out how to get great pop colors for our clients in our own projects and share that with you. So stick with me. All right, one thing I wanna say right off the bat, I'm not a designer, but I'm gonna share with you what I've learned about picking great colors for brands that we've done and stuff we've done here in-house. So the first thing that I like to look at is what industry are we working in and what are the typical, you know, kind of branding palettes for in that industry. So let's give just an example. Like if it's car stuff, lots of blacks, lots of reds, lots of grays, you know, primary colors like the yellows and things like that, because those are associated with the automobile industry. So we kind of start with that vibe because we don't want to come with something that um, is hard for the consumer to understand when by and large, they've been trained to sort of see things a certain way. So that's my first warning is, as much as it is an invitation to be creative, don't go so far off in the left field that you gotta spend a lot of time explaining your brand and how it fits when it just doesn't look like it fits. So think about, as you're developing your brand, sending a consistent message that resonates in a way that's well understood with the market that you're trying to address. So for medical, there's you know a lot of blues, light blues, and so on and so forth. And you know typically that's associated with a high level of trust. There are, and I'm not even gonna to begin to dive into this on this video, but you can find this stuff very easily online, a whole lot of psychological associations with different colors, and you can sort of research that first. But I think looking at the organic, you know, kind of what's out in the field is a good tell about where to start. Then you've got to work hard to not just be an also ran and look like everybody else. So you gotta say, okay, this is the industry I'm in. It kind of has this vibe. Now, how can I differentiate myself a little bit with, with you know, a, something that's a little bit special? So an example of that to go back to the automobile, you know, example we're using is, we got a lot of blacks, a lot of reds, a lot of grays, yellows, some primary colors, but you might be the brand that uses a little bit of purple and all that, and that still can fit in, but definitely can differentiate you. You know, and so there's little places there where you can, you know, set yourself apart, but still it all makes sense to the buyer and the person that's looking in at your branding. Now, the other thing to consider online is that we have sort of needs that are on a website, whether mobile or desktop doesn't matter. And we need to address those needs. And one of those is buttons and calls to actions, headers, and the way all of the colors fit together. We want our branding to pop, but we also want our calls to action to stand out on the page. So that means that once we establish those sort of base brand colors, which is typically two to three, then we got to go, and this is how we often do it, and look at the other side of the color wheel. So if you pull up a color wheel, you guys can see that. Look at the opposite side of the color wheel to find something that's going to contrast. And that's probably going to be where we're going to find our buttons and the colors we're going to use for our calls to action. So that they literally lift off the page visually, right? So that's sort of the nice way to follow that process is to establish your base colors and then go look for your contrasting colors that you're going to use as, you know, ways to move eyes on the page, literally to, to direct attention, right? Because that's what you need to be able to do on a web page. And you need to have that in your toolbox as you develop everything around your brand. This goes all the way down to even a simpy, simple email message, right? So you have your branding at the top, your text, whatever background, if you're doing something fancy with the email. And then you want that button, whatever the action item on that messaging to pop. And in order to do that, you've got to find a contrasting color that's gonna step off the page, step off the screen a little bit. So that's the next thing to think about. When we're done, we typically end up with around five colors to work with. 
And those colors are gonna give us everything we need to design all sorts of, you know, everything from print, digital, web pages, landing pages, messaging, you know, emails and, and all the things. And that gives you enough to move around and create borders and headers and logos and, and all the buttons and calls to actions and header text and, and, you know, cool layers and it all comes together. So I like having five, that's my, that's my bag. And I try to push for that with our clients that may not fall into where you feel like you're gonna end up, but I think it's hard to be anywhere less than four with all the things that we just talked about in this video that you need to just, you know, to contemplate. So go out there and read a little bit about color psychology. That's my suggestion, because that can help. But more importantly, look at your industry and what kind of that vibe is and start working off of that with your own creativity. And then the last piece is figure out how to get those contrasting colors into your brand palette so that you can get that messaging and those calls to action that you need to have jump off the page working in your favor so that customers know exactly where your actions are on all of the elements that you put together to help sell whatever it is that you sell. So hopefully this helped you a little bit today. I know it helped me, it's been a long process for me. Like I said, I'm not a designer and you may not be a designer either, but it doesn't take a lot to learn the basic sort of requirements, which is what we talked about today, and find a designer to help you, you know, really nail down. I mean, there's millions and millions of these colors to, you know, finalize, and, you know, you gotta come up with a nice brand board, and I can't say enough about having a professional on staff here, and if you're launching your business or giving your business a facelift, go find somebody that's qualified to do this. And if you can't, reach out to us. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one.